big thing. We're trying to change the uh, habit of losing. I talked about it last week. And that's four in a row. That's a positive. Uh, that's the first time since 2016 on the 9-4 bowl team that beat UTS, uh, UT San Antonio. And before that, you have to go all the way back till 2004. Uh, obviously, in 2005, we opened up with UNLV on Labor Day and then went to Missouri and beat them. So that's a little bit more impressive of a 2-0 start than this one. But it don't matter. You say we were 2-0 in 2005 and we were 2-0 in 2021. Nobody's going to go back and look. I just happen to know who it is. Uh, I, I, I was a little bit – I mean, give – first off, let me give uh, the team that we just played I, – I, I know I don't like them. Give them a lot of credit. They, they fought their tails off tonight, and I thought Coach Martin and his staff did a great job. And I think Coach Martin is the right guy for that job. He's done a phenomenal job down there. Uh, the, the 2017 coaching job he did um, is unbelievable. And, I mean, I don't make those decisions, but I, I think he does a great job for him, and he makes him a very competitive football team. Uh, I was disappointed that we didn't win this thing going away. We made way too many mistakes in the first half. Um, the, the big touchdown that they got at the end of the second quarter, that's ridiculous. As an old DB coach, that, that's horrible. And so we need to get that corrected because those are the differences in close games between winning and losing games. And then my attitude and my opinion on this stuff, those two fourth down attempts down in the, in the red zone, you can call me as much of an idiot as you want. We're trying to establish something around here. It's an attitude. And so I got upset with those guys because when we, when we go for those opportunities, they have to put that thing in the end zone or they have to get the first down. And especially when we're running the ball as good as we were, and then to get stonewalled like that, that, that's, uh, that ain't good enough. And the last one, being up by nine or being up by 12, it's still they need two touchdowns to beat us. So we're trying to establish a culture. Now it's all about winning. And the one earlier, um, mistake or not, I'm going to go down dying with what I believe in. And we're going to establish something special around here. And they're going to have, they have that attitude. And they understand what I want. And when they come over and they're apologizing um, with pretty, pretty sincere uh, hurt in their eyes because they feel they let me down, that, that means we have a chance. And so um, we, we, uh, I, say, I said it all week long. We're the flagship university for this state. We should win this game every single time. Uh, in my opinion, we're better than they are as a school, uh, and now that, that's, just, that's just my opinion, and I have strong feelings for it. They're good enough to come up here and beat us. Obviously, they did it in 2017. They won two in a row in 16-17, so give them credit for that. But I, I have my feelings and what we're trying to establish around here. So I'm proud of our team. Uh, we're 2-0. and We've got a great opponent next week. We're not a sacrificial lamb. Now, they may think we are, but we're going to go down there and we're going to put our best foot forward and we're going to go uh, fight and compete. So, what do we got? Go ahead, Brandon. Coach, positives you took away from the fourth quarter, the big touchdown pass, the interception, uh, final minutes of the game. How encouraging was that to see some big plays? Well, the, the challenge at halftime was uh, don't. Last week, I thought we got out physical. So, let's go out there and out physical them and, and establish uh, up front the dominance. And I thought we did a really good job of running the ball in the second half, other than those two fourth downs. Um, that third and 19 that we dumped it off to Chad, um, we were aggressively trying to go for the first down. They have a timeout, so they're going to be able to stop the clock whether we throw an incomplete pass or not. So we were aggressively trying to get the first down. We didn't, and then I thought the defense in the fourth quarter did a really good job. I mean, the, the, the drive that they had to uh, cut the score to 35-24 was inhibited by a targeting penalty. Um, I mean, that was a... That's an aggressive guy going, and I think their helmets must have hit because it didn't look like targeting from the sideline. But uh, we'll feel, I mean, they did a good job. I thought they did a good job of overturning the one on Devin in the first half because I was upset about that one because I thought he did a great job. Um, but they're going to err on the side of safety, which is better for our game. Uh, referees never have a home game. So all the nonsense that I give them on the sidelines, they, they, they were really good. Um, but I thought we established the run in the fourth quarter. Uh, I just, I thought we should have went uh, Juan going away, and I was disappointed we didn't. Go ahead, man. You, know, you, you, know, you say about uh, being a lot better in the second game. What did you see in the second game that, that you saw? Whether it was somebody I thought Terry. I mean, defensively, um, I thought we improved outside of those uh, three. I, th I thought there were three big plays in the secondary 
We had a little bit of trouble covering out routes, um, and then we gave up the long one right before halftime. I thought up front we, we improved dramatically. We, uh, I mean, one, we knocked out the quarterback, the starter, Jonah, and then we got pressure on 15 all night long, which was, uh, I mean, that's a positive. I mean, we, we got okay pressure last week. I thought it was a lot better. I don't think we did a good enough job covering them on the outside because if we could have covered them on the outside, we could have really dialed it up and, and got after the quarterback. Uh, up front, I thought we ran the ball better. And I thought Terry did a really nice job. Now, he missed some throws. Now, I'm a perfectionist, so um, as good as the 385 is, he missed some throws. He could have thrown for about 450. And we, we'll clean those up, and uh, it'll give us a chance to be a little bit more explosive. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, what do you think of the atmosphere? I know you didn't get to outside, or maybe you did. I, I thought outside, it felt like college football. It was, it was a big party. There were people, 28,000 plus. Just your thoughts. I pay attention to all that stuff. And when we drove up in the bus, this morning for walkthrough, the RV park was un unbelievable. It was awesome. I mean, all the way out to the west side of the pit uh, and, and around the corner, set up with RVs. Um, when we came over here at 2.30, we couldn't come up Cesar Chavez because the traffic was too bad. So the, our escort took us around, university took us around campus, then we came in the backside. I thought the Lobo walk was outstanding. I thought the atmosphere inside our stadium was unbelievable. Um, we, now, it can be better. And it will be better as long as we keep improving and, and doing those things. But the 28,000 fans that were in there, uh, I thought on third down in the second half, they were, they were awesome. And it was the first time that our kids, I mean, when they're coming over the sideline talking about how awesome it is to have support and, and getting an advantage on third down. And we had them, I mean, our, uh, we had them backed up down there in the, in the north end zone and they jump off sides because they're having trouble with the snap count. That's all from the fan support. And I thought that was outstanding and awesome. Uh, I thought our student section was unbelievable. Now I'm going to give them a hard time because they wanted to sit over there in the shade under that beautiful tree. But they had a, they had a big group of them together. And the Red Rally was a really neat deal on Thursday night. And we, we challenged them to all show up. And I think they did because that was a really good group over there. So we need to continue with our football players on campus doing a good job and keep those guys coming because it really dramatically changes the atmosphere. It was a college football town today in Albuquerque. And that's where we're headed. I believe it can be big time and special. And I'm proud of the community that showed up. Um, now, I got a, a business degree, so I'm gonna do all the things I can for marketing. I think our marketing department over the last uh, four weeks has done an unbelievable job with some of the things, I mean, both on social media, um, the billboards, um, some of the videos that we put out. I mean, Chase and Joe Thwente and those guys are working their tails off endlessly. Now, I get after them a whole lot because I have a whole lot of ideas, and that doesn't mean I'm always right, but I've put my nose in everywhere. And uh, those guys, they never say no. They do everything they can to make this place special. And when you have that kind of buy-in, you have a chance. So I'm proud of those guys because we're, we're all part of one team. Yes, sir. Hope's sake. Hey, how did you feel about the alumni showing up? I saw you guys gather around, and it almost looked like you guys were fixing to suit up yourselves. You know what? That, that, I mean, there was a bunch of my teammates there. Um, Coach Long had a bunch of his teammates here. And then guys that paid, played for us over the, the 10, 11 years that we were here. And then guys that um, even came after us that really have a great appreciation for what we're trying to do around here. And this is their program. Uh, I mean, I say it all the time, the past, the present, and the future of Lobo football. And when we've got those guys involved like that, we can do something really special. Uh, they had a great event out at Top Golf yesterday. There was about 50 or 60 of them. Uh, Madison Ballman, our, uh, Maddie, our alumni director, did a great job of setting that up. And then we had guys that drove in and, and were excited to see the coaches that were on staff previously that coached them, that we maintain relationships with. Um, I thought that it was really, really exciting, especially in the pregame. Um, I mean, you had guys like Donovan Portery and, and Michael Tui, uh, those guys that, that, did, uh, that put their heart, sweat, and blood and tears into this program when we were here before. Um, now they're trying to give us kids that they're coaching and stuff. And Jeremy Thompson, who's, who's got a great connection in Frisco, Texas, I mean, when we get those feelers out there, it just makes everything that much better. And I thought they were great. So, great question. Go ahead, Steve. How were you able to win this game? And was it New Mexico State getting tired, you feel? I thought we were better. We were a better football team. Uh, I thought we made too many mistakes to win it the way we should have. Now, this is a rivalry, okay? It is a rivalry. And the game should be close every year. And I say we're the better football team. They can plaster that on their bulletin boards all they want because if it takes them that to get them excited to play, then shame on them. Uh, I mean, I, I, 
as much as I have a dislike for them, I love this game because of atmospheres that were like that. And when we go down there and play, the atmosphere is, is exactly the same because it's the best two teams in this state competing against each other for something special. We're, we live in a great state. Now, I thought we, uh, we didn't execute good enough. Um, we made way too many mistakes in the first half. I think we had seven penalties for 67 yards, which is way too many. So we need to eliminate those and continue to get better at that. But we were the better football team tonight. You played before uh, the fourth down call, last fourth down call. Do you think that Bobby Cole scored? Cause I don't know. Like you know, I, I mean, we'll watch it on tape tomorrow. I can't tell. I mean, the, the, uh, they didn't think he did. So, and they, I mean, they review all those scoring plays. So the guys up top must have saw it and didn't think he made it in. But I mean, from where I'm, where I'm at, I can't tell with that angle. Go ahead, Sam. Coach, you talked from the pretty much from the beginning about the defense being a work in progress, and a couple weeks in a row now, we're all three levels of defense making plays at the same time. Where do you feel like it's at? at you know, versus you know, where eventually where you want it to be. Where do you feel like this defense is at? The one you guys are trying to establish. We gave up 345 yards. That's way too many. We gave up 25 points. That's way too many. We're not good enough. Um, I think they're playing hard. I think they're being physical. Um, but we, we, uh, we give up way too many out routes in situations where we're sending pressure on the quarterback. The big play at the end of the first half ain't good enough. Uh, we'll, we'll be the best defense in this league. We're not there yet. We've, we've made progress. But, I mean, unless we hold somebody to zero yards, I probably won't be happy. But 340 is way too much. What do you, uh, your first win against New Mexico State as head coach, so, you know, you're a New Mexico guy. What do you do to celebrate? You go to I smile. Uh, this is another one that th this wasn't a relief to win. This was fun to win. Now it's a relief because I think we're the best. We're the best team in the state, and we're the better team. But uh, I'm gonna go out there with my family out there in the parking lot and hang out for a little bit and enjoy it. And let the traffic clear out because when you have 30,000 people, there's actually traffic. Let that clear out. Uh, enjoy it. Um, I don't think I'll enjoy it very long because the team we play is pretty darn good and we got to start preparing for them in the morning. Um, they had a close game today that uh, unless something changed, I believe they pulled it out. And so, um, I mean, they had, a, they had a good time in the locker room. We'll put that to bed and get ready to play our next opponent. Go ahead, Van. Uh, get ready, guys, get ready for I don't know. We'll, we'll, it was Jacob Jankowiak. We'll get him. Uh, we'll get him looked at and see what the damage is to his knee, whether it's a meniscus, whether it's an ACL, what it is. Um, he went back in after he heard it, and then they determined that they needed to look at it a little bit more. And, and he did not play the second half. Um, I mean, I was proud of him though, because we have a mentality around here that if, no matter what happens, you get yourself off the field, and he did. And that's a mentality. You can lay there and, and let the people come out and make you feel better and pat you on the back and make mama feel better. But mama feels a lot better if you're hobbling off the sideline and then they look at you over there. So it's a mentality and I'm, I'm proud of them. Um, we'll have some nicks and bruises after this game because it was a really physical game. We'll see what that is tomorrow and, and see who, who is what and, and figure that out. But it was a physical football game. There was a lot of really good hard hitting out there and give those guys credit because they played hard. Coach, what can you say about uh, Manny Logan Green doing the program for a few years now? The punt returns, the kick returns, long touchdown tonight. Just what you've seen from him so far. Okay, let's be positive. Well, let's start negative first. He dropped. He didn't. He didn't feel the punt where I thought we could have got a lot of yards there in the fourth quarter. Uh, I thought he did a really nice job. I mean, he, he made a couple great catches. He had his first receiving touchdown in his career, which is it's kind of shocking for as many uh, as good as he's been for us around here. Manny, much like Jarek, uh, in the same boat of button heads with us, button heads with me when we first got here because I have an expectation for those guys that I refuse to give in. And when they come through to fruition for what we expect them to do, they're better for it. And I refuse to fail them. And Manny Logan Green's one of my favorites now. Um, I mean, I love all these kids and I think it's our job to mentor them and, and not go easy on them. Because everything in this world, people want to pat them on the back and tell them how great they are, and, and life ain't that easy. So we hold him to a high standard. He's really worked his tail off to get where he is, and I think his productivity tonight showed, and um, I'm proud of him. What else? I'm proud of that young man sitting over there in the, in the chair. Uh, 385 yards is a heck of a deal. Uh, but besides the production he's done on the field, 
it's the attitude and leadership that he's bringing over there on the sideline that's helping our football team. Uh, I mean, we're 2-0. and He's a big part of it now. Four in a row. Uh, hopefully we can keep it going next week. The team that plays the hardest, the longest, has the best chance, and we're trying to establish something around here. So, I mean, they're good enough to go in there over there next week and embarrass us. I'm not afraid to tell our kids that. I'm not afraid to challenge our kids. Uh, but there's going to be a time where they won't have a chance to embarrass us. Now, we're going to go over there and we're going to put our best foot forward and, and take the best chance to win. And they put, their, they put their pants on the same way we do. We, they put their shoulder pads on the same way we do. And you play every game, every single Saturday. So we'll prepare and go with them. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for coming. Go Lobos.